Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is my hope and prayer that this video is going to find you guys in good health. Personally, I'm fine. Kisumu is also fantastic. There is something which I've been observing of late. Former President Uhuru Muge Kenyatta is no longer actively involved in Azimio activities. And someone was telling me that Uhuru Kenyatta is actually under a lot of pressure to quit as the leader of Azimio. And the absence of Uhuru Kenyatta from Azimio activities is actually impacting negatively on Raila Amolo Odinga. So in this video, I want to explain to you guys how the absence of Uhuru Kenyatta is impacting negatively on Raila Amolo Odinga. Before we do that, let us begin by asking uh, the big question. Why do you think Uhuru Kenyatta is missing from uh, Azimio activities? Why do you think he's missing? Number one, Uhuru Kenyatta is being advised by his team to remain a statesman because of the fact that he lost the election. So they want him to remain a statesman because Involving himself in uh, Azimio activities would mean attacking uh, William Samoya Ruto and will also expose him to attack. So they don't want Uhuru Kenyatta to be attacked. These are the same same people who actually misadvised Uhuru Kenyatta and Uhuru Kenyatta lost to William Ruto. Number two, Uhuru Kenyatta was given or took over the role of uh, peace ambassador at the African Union. And I remember opining on this channel that the moment Uru Kenyatta was going to take over that role, his hands were going to be tied. Because William Ruto went ahead of him and announced that he was the one who was offering Uru Kenyatta the job. Well, in real sense, the job was offered to Uru Kenyatta by the African Union. So Uru Kenyatta right now is, is uh, reporting in quotes directly to to William Samoy Araputo, which means there is no way he can do anything which can cause frictions between them. And lastly, Uhuru Kenyatta is still facing shame. You know, Uhuru Kenyatta became the first president, sitting president of the Republic of Kenya, to support a candidate, opposition candidate, and then lost with him. So Uru Kenyatta is yet to come to terms with the fact that he actually lost the elections. But how is the absence of Uru Kenyatta impacting on Raila Amolo Odinga? Before we get into all those, in case you are watching this channel for the first time, I want you guys to take a second or two, press that subscribe button, so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is now. Let us get back to the main issue. And I want to begin by asking you this question. Because so many people have always told me a different story. Let me ask, pose the question. Assuming Uhuru Kenyatta had not supported Raila Molodinga. Or let me reframe it. Do you believe that the handshake contributed to Raila Odinga's loss? In 2022, uh, <laughs> August election, that if Raila Odinga had not entered into the handshake with Uru Kenyatta, do you think Raila would have won? I know most people believe that Raila Odinga would have won. For me, I have a different thought. If Uhuru and Ruto had stuck together, William Ruto would have taken control of the deep state. I can assure you, he would have been more ruthless with Raila Molodinga. Because elections in this country are never determined by the vote. If he could outwit them from an outside, what do you think he would have done if he had all those power? But that's not the main issue right now. The question is, how is Uhuru Kenyatta absence? affecting Raila Molodinga. I know some people believe that the absence of Uru Kenyatta is not affecting Raila Molodinga in any way. Let me explain to you. Number one is the Mount Kenya factor. If you look at the 
last election, Mund Kenya gave Raila Odinga close to 1.4 million votes. Then in Mund Kenya, Raila Odinga managed to have at least some high profile individuals there. Peter Munya, for example, Peter Kenneth, Kanini Kega, for example, there was Amina Chege. There were others like uh, Maina Kamanda, you know, SK Masharia, so many people. In fact, there were so many people who were supporting Raila Odinga from the mountain. These people, majority of them, were supporting Raila Odinga because of Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta. If Uhuru Kenyatta were to stop supporting Raila Odinga, I don't see someone like Kanini Kega, who is already on his way out, by the way. I don't see someone like Sabina Chenge. I even don't see someone like uh, Peter Munya or even Peter Kenneth sticking their necks out for Raila Amolodinga. I don't see that. So Mount Kenya factor, as much as most people always underrate it in terms of contribution to Raila Odinga's lead, for me, I tend to think or differ with them that Mount Kenya actually played a role. Raila Odinga just messed up the election. It was yesterday, someone call, called me, a friend of mine from Kilifi, a good friend of mine on this channel, and he was explaining to me that they were where he was. As if you didn't have agent. So he was an agent out of six streams, as Mew had only one agent. And for him, he was an agent for an independent candidate. So it was, it became, and now he took it upon himself to also help the Azimio guy. But from what he could read from the UDA, who were well prepared, they had the right number of agents, they were fed, they were given money, they were given breakfast, they were given lunch, something which never happened on our side. So most people blame Uhuru, most people blame Mount Kenya, but for me, Raila Odinga was not just prepared for the last election. He was misled. So that's number one, Mount Kenya factor. Number two is what I normally call perceptional value. In politics, the only thing is that it's a perceptional game. Uhuru Kenyatta supporting Raila Odinga gives Raila Odinga that perceptional value. It adds perceptional value to Raila Odinga's side that he has the support of Jubilee Party leader. He has the support of former president. If Uhuru were to stop Azimio activities, and you'll see people like, um, like uh, Janini Kega leaving and the rest, so many others are also on the way, people like Oparanya threatening to leave, then the value, the perceptual value is going to go down that Raila Odinga is losing, that Azimio is losing. At this point in time, Raila Odinga will not want anything Azimio to appear to be losing. Number three, it also exposes Raila Amun Odinga to attacks from uh, Kenya Kwanzaa. You know, if there's one thing which William Ruto succeeded on was in was uh, to avoid attacking Uhuru Kenyatta directly. That role was assigned to Uriya Digashagwa. Now, when Ruto became the president, he now stopped. So Uriya Digashagwa has now focused on attacking Raila Odinga. Initially, Uriya Digashagwa was only attacking President Ruto Kenyatta. And now because the president is out, former president is out of the picture, he can only attack Raila Amolodinga. So assuming Uhuru Kenyatta were to resurface, and for example, during yesterday's meeting, we, which he was not present, if he were to be present, and then assuming Uhuru read that statement, or Uhuru Kenyatta was the one making the statements which Raila Odinga has been issuing, the attacks would now be on Uhuru Kenyatta. So as long as Uhuru Kenyatta is out of the picture, the person who is going to be attacked more is none other than Raila Amolo Odinga. So it's exposing him to attacks. If there were two, you know, there's a way the, the attacks will, uh, will be absorbed. Number four, in my view, is it grants Kenya Kwanzaa the propaganda tool which they strongly or madly need. Let's face it. 
William Ruto cannot go to Mount Kenya and tell them that, you know, I gave Uru Kenyatta a job. Yeah, he's not working with us. Janini Kega and the rest are now working with us. So William Mutu, Njo Sasa, Atumtaki, we want him to go to Bo, to Mondo. So those kind of propaganda can actually work against Raila Amolo Odinga. And lastly, it also brings forth the question of Jubilee future in Azimio. Do you think Jubilee will continue being part of Azimio in the absence <coughs> of Uru Kenyatta actively involved in uh, Azimio activities? If you look at uh, yesterday's event, which was attended by Kalonzo, which was attended by Karwa, <coughs> meeting with the governors, clearly Jubilee was not represented. Of course, they don't have a governor, so you can say they don't have a governor, but why was the absence of Jubilee glaring? You could just tell that Jubilee was missing. There was no Jeremy Kioni. There was no senior officials from Jubilee party attending that particular meeting. Because if, for example, someone like uh, David Murade was, up, was present, you would say that Uhuru Kenyatta was there in spirit. But clearly, you could not see Jubilee, which brings the question of Jubilee feature in Azimia. And of course, politics is dynamics. A lot of factors keep on changing. But let us wait and see how things are going to unfold moving forward. Thank you, guys. I'll be going to Siaya, Vincent. Hopefully, we'll meet somewhere. Stage there. Bye-bye for now.